Hello everyone, this video covers uh, sections 10.1 and 10.2. 10.1 is Laplace transforms. So let's start with that, section 10.1. Uh, Laplace transforms are going to be very important in this class. They are one of the most powerful tools to solve differential equations. And you may need to use Laplace transforms in any of the subsequent classes you had to take. Now, the Laplace transform of a function f of t, okay, so this will be the function, is defined to be the improper integral from 0 to infinity of the function you want to transform times this kernel this is usually called the kernel and if this limit exists then the laplace transform exists now notice how the original function f of t is a function that depends on t and once you transform it you will get a function that depends on s so s is going to be the new the new variable now in this class, we're only concerned on how to find Laplace transforms and how to use them to solve differential equations. So you don't have to be too concerned about the technical details of why this is true, but it will not hurt you to see at least one theorem why this is the case. You don't have to prove the theorem or anything, but here it is. Suppose that f is a piecewise continuous function. Now in case you forget this, remember piecewise means that you could have a function that looks like this. Okay, so that's piece, piecewise. So therefore, the function f of t doesn't even have to be continuous. It just has to be piecewise continuous. Also, the function has to be bounded by some constants. And those are the two main, two main requirements. Okay. From here, you can see that this term or the kernel is really forcing the whole function to be, and uh, to to be converging. If this was positive, this will go to infinity, and there will be no hope that this will ever converge if this goes to to infinity. Okay. Now the notation is very very important here. So remember the function you're trying to transform is f of t. So therefore, the notation is going to be this. The Laplace transform of the function will be denoted by this. This and this is exactly the, the same thing. So it depending on the context, you may want to use this. But notice that this is exactly the same thing as, as this. So the two things are the same thing. Now the book actually uses L and either way is fine. You can also use just L of F of T. Let's do an example with the most basic function of one. Can I get any easier than this? So what will be the Laplace transform of one? So therefore the Laplace transform of the function one is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st times the function dt. Okay. Now remember that the official way to do this or the formal way is to use limits but you don't really have to as long as you know what you're doing but let's do this the formal way at least for the first example this is equals to the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b or e to the minus st dt which is equals to the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over s e to the minus st from 0 to b, which is equal to the limit of b goes to infinity minus 1 over, 1 over s times e to the minus s b 
minus e to the 0, which is equals to, to 1. Now, this limit is very, very, very important for what we're going to do in this class. Notice that as b goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. Actually, this goes to e to the minus infinity, which is equals to, to 0, or this. If this goes to minus infinity, notice that this is going to, to 0. So therefore, this is negative 1 over s times 0 minus 1, which is equals to 1 over s. So that implies that a Laplace transform of 1 is equals to 1 over s. And that's it. Obviously, if the function is more complicated than 1, which will be the case very soon, then the the integral, it will be a lot more tricky to integrate, and you will see it a little bit. All right, let's try this again with a new function. So now the question is, what is the Laplace transform of e to the minus 3t? So again, we go to the definition. This is equals to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus um st, I mean this always has to have minus st, times e to the minus 3t, which is the function in winter with respect to t. Then this is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus t, and then this will be s plus 3, the whole t, dt. Now we use this already, but just to refresh your memory, we call that the integral of e to the minus kt dt is equals to minus 1 over k e to the minus kt. Again, there is no need to keep using limits. Just keep in mind that in theory you're always using limits when you go to, to infinity. So if we integrate this, this will be minus 1 over s plus 3 times e to the minus t s plus 3 using this formula. Okay. And this goes from 0 to infinity. And just like we mentioned on the last example, if we plug in infinity in here, since this is negative, this goes to zero, and if you plug in zero, zero times anything is zero, so this will be e to the zero, which is one, and negative negative is plus when you multiply, so this is one over s plus three, and this will be the Laplace transform. All right, let's try another example that is very, very similar to the previous one. So now the question is, what is the Laplace transform of if to the 2t? So we follow the exact same technique. The integral of e to the minus st times e to the 2t. Now we do the exact same thing we did in the previous one. You can factor the t you want to, but it's going to make the taking the limits a little more tricky. So I highly recommend you to factor the minus t all the time. So it will be s minus 2 dt. Now the integral of this is uh, minus 1 over s minus 2, just like we did before, e to the minus t s minus 2, again, apply the the limits, and this is 99% the same as the previous one. It still will be 0, this is 1, and the Laplace transform is just 1 over s minus 2. Now you will see in the coming sections that it is no secret that if the function is exponential, it makes finding the Laplace transform very, very, very easy. And then this is it. 
All right, this example is gonna be a little more tricky because now you have sine in here and we're gonna to have to use integration by parts twice to do this. So here it is. So we wanna find the Laplace transform of sine of two t. So again, by definition, this is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st sine 2 t dt now for lack of a better name i'm just going to call the laplace transform i now for for integral because of the integral we're trying to find and you kind of have no choice you have to use integration by parts here so let's say that u is equals to e to the minus st and db would be sine 2 t all right, so therefore the u is minus s e to the minus st, and then b will be um, minus one half cosine two t. Y minus because the derivative of cosine is minus sine times two, so they will cancel each other out. All right, so just keep track of what i is. So then i, if we use the uh, integration by parts, which remember is uv minus v du, will give you the, the following. It will be uv, which will give you minus one half e to the minus st cosine to t from zero to infinity minus uh, b du which is minus s e to the minus st you should have dt dt hmm. now notice here the if you plug infinity in here this goes to zero so the whole thing goes to zero but then if you plug in zero e to the zero is one but cosine of zero is also equals to one so this will be zero minus one for that part okay. Now here you have to watch out because you have minus and minus and minus. That should give you minus uh, one half. You can actually also factor the S. So there will be you can factor the S and the one half. And this will give you the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st cosine to t dt or it will simplify a little bit this is one half minus s over two the integral from zero to infinity e to the minus s t cosine to t dt all right so now in this part we had to do integration by parts again so you just have to be very careful here to keep track of everything that, that is going on so if we do integration by parts again, we're gonna do the exact same trick. Uh, U is going to be again um, e to the minus st. So we already know that the U is minus s e to the minus st dt. And dv, it will be cosine to t dt, which means that b is one half sine to t. So this is what we have so far. Just make sure you keep track of everything that's going on. So we have one half here, minus s over two. That is going to multiply everything that is in the green part. And by green part, I mean this, okay? Where you have to use integration by parts again. 
So if we do the exact same trick, you have to do a trick, sorry, you do UV, so this will give you E to the minus ST times one half sine of two T, again from zero to infinity, and then minus the integral from zero to infinity of B du. Now here, if we do the exact same thing we did here, uh, here the ones will buy, but you see here that everything disappears, and this is the reason why. If you plug infinity in here, this will give you zero, so the whole thing is zero. Now if you plug in zero in here, e to the zero is one, but sine of zero is equal to zero. So therefore, this whole thing is gone, is equal to zero. So this is what you have so far. So we have the one half still from there, minus s over two, which is still this part, times, now this will be zero. Now the minus here and the minus here becomes plus. So therefore this is equals to the integral from zero to infinity, and then you have the one half in front and the s, so you have another s over two in there, and then this will be e to the minus st sine to t, you rearrange the terms dt. However, don't forget that all of this is what we call i, so therefore this is still i, this is still i, and notice that this part is technically the original integral, which is still i. So that's the important observation to solve the problem. So this is what we have so far. You have the i is equals to one half minus s squared over four times i. And at this point, this is the same thing as trying to solve an equation like this. How do you solve x equals to one half minus four x? How do you solve this problem? Well, just combine the x's and solve for x. Okay. All right, so if we do that, then this is what we have. We will have i plus s squared over 4i is equals to 1 half and then you can factor the i this will be 4 plus s squared over 4 equals to 1 half and therefore i is equals to 1 half times 4 over 4 plus s square, which is equals to 2 over 4 plus s square. Now you don't have to write it like this, but it will make life easier. This is exactly the same thing as this 2 square, and therefore, this is going to be the Laplace transform of sine 2t. Now you can see that this one was a little more involved and the reason is the the function was more complicated than just one or e to a, to a power. However, there are good news for finding Laplace transforms, which I will tell you very soon. But if I ask you or if the question is asking you to find the Laplace transform using the definition then you have to go through all of this and find the, the integral. Okay. okay, now let's do the Laplace transform of an actual uh, piecewise function. So here f of t uh, is exactly what we have here, but just to make it look nicer, is equals to this 1 between 0 and 2, and then minus 1 when t is greater or equals to 2. 
So therefore, the Laplace transform of f of t is equals to the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the minus st times 1 dt plus the integral from 2 to infinity of e to the minus st times minus 1 dt. So therefore, this is negative 1 over s e to the minus st from 0 to 2 plus 1 over s e to the minus st from 2 to infinity. And then if we just plug in the limits of integration, this will be e to the minus 2s minus 1 plus 1 over s 0 minus e to the minus 2 to s. And then you simplify everything. And you should check this. This is just basic algebra. This is what you get. And this is the Laplace transform. Now let's look to the gamma function. The gamma function is very important in mathematics, not just in differential equations, but in many other areas. But the gamma function is defined to be to be this. This is not a Laplace transform, but we're going to use it to do Laplace transforms in a little bit. Now uh, you should definitely stop the video here and check this by yourself. And this is what I mean. If n is equals to zero, what is the integral we get? So therefore this is zero to infinity e to the minus x x to the zero dx. So this is just the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus x dx, which is negative e to the minus x from zero to infinity. We did this a couple times already, so this is 0 minus 1, which is just equals to, to 1. That's it. Now, if n is equals to 1, then this becomes the integral from 0 to infinity, e to the minus x, x to the first dx. Then if we use integration by parts, you get minus x, x e to the minus x from 0 to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus x, this x, the x. This is actually equals to 0 minus, and then remember this is 0 minus 1, so the answer is actually 1. Now, for the next ones, this is just integration by par a few more times. And you should check the next two. The integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x, x squared dx. And you should check that this is actually equals to just 2. If n is equals to 3, this is the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus x times x cubed. And this is actually equals to 1 times 2 times 3, which is 6. Now, why do we care about this? Well, uh, once you see this four times, you kind of guess a pattern. And notice that if this is 3, this is 1 times 2 times 3. If this is 2, it's just 1 times 2. If this is 1, it's just 1. Therefore, from here, you can conclude that the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x times x to the n dx is equals to n factorial. So this is one of the best mathematical results to keep for the rest of your life. So here it is. So this is what the gamma function is telling us. And we're going to use it in a little bit to find a few more Laplace transforms. Alright, so now we're going to use the gamma function that we just found in the previous example to find the Laplace transform of t to the n, where n is any integer, actually. Alright, so here it is. Uh, by definition, the Laplace transform of t 
t to the n is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus st times t to the n dt. So that's the definition. Okay. All right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a substitution. So let u equals to st. So that means the t is equals to u over s. So that should be obvious. But from here, it means that the u is equals to s dt or the dt is equals to the u over s. All right, so if we use these transformations and plug it into here, this is what we get. So this is the integral still from zero to infinity. Notice that if t goes to infinity, s times t is also going to go to infinity. So therefore, u also goes to infinity. And now there's going to be e to the minus u. Now, notice that t is equals to u over s. So therefore, this will be t over s will be u. Sorry, t is u over s to the n power. And also notice that dt is equals to du over s. Let me color code this so you can see what I mean. So t is equals to this part. So that's how we get this. And then dt is this, so that's how we get this. All right, so if we simplify this a little bit, this is equals to the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus u, u to the n, du. But notice that on the, part, on the bottom, you have s to the n times s. Well, s to the n times s is just s to the n plus 1. This integral depends on u, not s. So s is a constant, so you can pull it out. So this is equals to 1 over s, s to the n plus 1. The integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus u, e to the n du. But... According to the gamma function, remember this by the gamma function that we just saw right now is equals to just n factorial. So therefore, this is equals to n factorial over s to the n plus 1. And that's it. So once you have done this, it makes finding... Um, the Laplace transforms of powers pretty easy. For example, uh, the Laplace transform of t to the 4 power will be equals to 4 factorial over s to the fifth power, which will just give you 24 over s to the fifth. And that's it. All right, let's do the last example of 10.1. So what will be the Laplace transform of a derivative, which is f prime? Okay. All right. Again, by definition, this is equals to the integral from zero to infinity, e to the minus s t times f prime of t dt. Okay. Now to integrate this, we're going to use integration by parts. So let's say that u is e to the minus s t, du is minus s e to the minus s t, like we have done this 5,000 times by now. Uh, db, therefore, is f prime of t, so therefore b is going to be just f of t. Okay. So then if we use uh, integration by parts, this is equals to u b 
which will give you f of t e to the minus st from 0 to infinity minus b which is f of t du which is minus s e to the minus st dt now here given the properties of the theorem about this function the theorem from the beginning remember if we plug in infinity here this will go to zero so the whole thing goes to zero but if you plug in um zero this will be f of zero and this will be equals to one so it will be f of zero times e to the zero which is one and then minus you can take the s out so this is the integral from zero to infinity of e to the minus st f of t dt which if you remember from the very beginning of the class this is just a minus f of zero here minus s but this by definition and when i mean by the class i mean the beginning of this section this is just a laplace transform of f so therefore this is minus s f of s and actually it's plus because minus and minus is plus so therefore the laplace transform of the derivative is the laplace transform of the function times s minus the initial condition which will be f of zero and this is going to be very important for what we're going to do in the next coming sections initial condition notice that you can also write this as this so it could make more sense to you this is s times the laplace transform of f of t minus f of zero so either one is okay and this is pretty much what we are after this is how we're going to solve the differential differential equations like you will see in in section 10.4 all right let's go now to section 10.2 but just to refresh your memory what we did right now in section 10.1 we use the definition of laplace transforms to find the laplace transform of a given given function for example uh, recall the the laplace transform of sine of 2t was equals to 2 over 4 plus s square okay now the goal of this section is actually to go backwards if we're given this where did this came from and this came obviously from sine 2t and the goal of that is that's how we're going to solve the differential equations we're actually trying to find out where did this came from so the notation is the following so if this is the case then that implies let me do it in, in here so then this implies that the inverse laplace transform of 2 of 4 plus s square is equals to sine 2t now here are the good news uh, there is a table that i'm going to show you right now which you will be able to use during the exams and for the most part that's how you're going to find the laplace transforms most of the time however if the question is asking you on the exam to find the laplace transform using the definition you have to do it the long the long way this is the the table you are allowed to use this table on the exams and in the quizzes everywhere and it's provided in or it will be provided in uh, beach which 
the way the table works is the following in this column you have the uh, the functions and here you have the Laplace transform or in other words this is the Laplace transform and this is the inverse Laplace transform for example let's say if, if we're trying to find this one you have to look to the formulas and find whatever is the closest to this at the beginning this is a little annoying and it takes time to get used to but trust me the table is your best friend when dealing with Laplace transforms as you can see the one that looks most close to this one is obviously formula number number seven okay? so number seven is the one we're going to to use and notice right away that well clearly the value for a is equals to to two so therefore the inverse is going to be assigned to t which is exactly what we got here all right let's try a couple more let's say that this is the this is the question okay find the inverse laplace transform of this again you're going to use formula number seven should be should be obvious actually it's not number seven it's question number is formula number A, which is right here. Okay, you can see that this one has the S on the top, and this one has the S. Now you don't have to rewrite it, but it will make it easier for you to, to follow. So this is the same thing as the inverse Laplace transform of S over S squared plus three squared. So therefore you look to formula number A, you can tell right away that this is going to be cosine of 3t. And this is how we're going to use the table to solve the differential equations. Now, when you use the table, you just have to make sure that it matches exactly. And if it doesn't match, usually the trick is you have to multiply by one and this is what I mean by multiply by one. If we're trying to find the Laplace transform of this one, clearly this is just S by itself with a power. So if we look to the to the table, the one that closest relates to that one is actually formula number three, which is this one. Okay. So if n is equals to 2 or 2 plus 1 is 3 but that means that the top has to be 2 factorial okay so that's the part where you have to be careful with the algebra and this is what i mean this is exactly the same thing as the inverse the plus transform then you pull the phi out and you're going to multiply and divide by 2 because this is going to be uh, 2 factorial, which is 2. So therefore, this is the same thing as phi over 2, the inverse Laplace transform of 2 over s cubed, which clearly from the table this is equals to t squared. So therefore, this is phi over 2 t squared. And that's a Laplace transform. So you have to make sure you fix it so that it, you get what you're supposed to get. So this is what I mean. The t squared, which is formula 3, is this part so if this one was 2 so t square it will give you 2 here and it will be s q which is exactly what we did but the phi in front was messing with the whole thing so that's why you had to fix it so it looks like this now all right what about the next example all right so this one uh, you can see this is very similar to this one 
Okay, we have a file. Already know we fix it with five or two, but now this one is S plus four. So which formula is that? And you look to the to the table. You can see that that is formula twenty twenty three right here. Okay, twenty three. So that's the formula. So for n, the value for n is gonna be at two, and the value for a is actually negative four. So therefore, um, if you fix this one, you still gonna need the five halves. So there's going to be five halves the Laplace transform of 2 over s plus 4 q which will give you 5 halves t square e to the minus 4 t using the the table this is actually formula number 23 now you are going to get a lot of examples or problems like this and you are not going to find this most likely on the table so you have to to break it down and you're going to have to use partial fractions so partial fractions are going to be very very important in this class so if you forgot partial fractions uh, which is when you learn in pre-calculus so this is from pre-calculus you definitely need to, to go and review that because your life is not going to be easy you forgot partial fractions now this is a very simple example but it still requires partial fractions this is what i mean if we have one over a square minus five s plus six this factors to one over s minus three times s minus two then the partial fraction says the following you need to find the value for a and the value for b so that you still will get this exact same thing okay so then you have a times s minus 2 plus b s minus 3 should be equals to 1 if s is equals to 2 then you're going to have minus b is equals to 1, so that means b is negative 1. If s is equals to 3, then that means that uh, a plus 0 is equals to 1, so that means b is equals to 1. I mean, sorry, a is equals to 1. Therefore, this is the same thing as the inverse Laplace transform of A, which is 1, so this will be 1 over S minus 3, plus the inverse Laplace transform of B, which is negative 1 over S minus 2. Now, since this is linear, so therefore this is the same thing as the inverse Laplace transform of the first function minus the inverse Laplace transform of the second function. Then if we look to the table, you can see that you're going to need formula 2 twice. Okay. So therefore uh, the answer for the first one is going to be e to the uh, 3t and then minus e to the 2t and, and that's it now again uh if you forgot partial fractions i highly 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 recommend you to to review them they're going to be very very important to make life pretty easy and the point is this uh if this was the original uh function that you need to find the inverse of 
which is usually what you get when you're trying to solve a differential equation. If you look to the table, okay, you don't want to find anything like that anywhere on the table. But you use partial fractions, you will break it into two pieces or three pieces or four, depending on the equation, where that will be on the table. So this is on the table, this is on the table. So let me make a note here. So this is not on the table, the way it is. But then this is on the table. And so is this. All right, so that's it for 10.1 and 10.2. Uh, make sure you have the table handy from now on. And specifically, make sure you review partial, partial fractions. And I'll see you in the next video for 10.4.